Imagine you are filling a beaker or vase with water at a constant rate, and you are watching the height of the water level as the beaker fills up. Consider the graph that will emerge as we compare the height of the water in the beaker as time passes. How might the graph change if we use beakers of different shapes? Maria and I decided to use the water line activity with Desmos. Students watch an animation of a cylindrical beaker fill up with water and are then asked to graph the height of the water as a function of time. As they are sketching or making points on their graph, they can see the corresponding height on the beaker. At any time, they can replay the animation. It will always show the actual water height as well as the height that they plotted for each point in time. Maria, when you tried this task with your class, how did you set it up? I first created a new classroom in Desmos and wrote the classroom code on the board. Each student signed into our virtual classroom on their own laptop. As soon as they had signed in, they worked through the activity at their own pace on laptops. Although students worked individually, they were encouraged to discuss their ideas with each other. Stop it at different points and put those points in. As students were navigating through the various tasks, I could observe their progress on the teacher's dashboard. As your students were working through the task, what kind of feedback were they given? They had instant feedback as they hovered their cursor on the graph since the height of the water was shown on the beaker simultaneously. This gave them a sense of the scale and where their points should be roughly in terms of height, but not time. Most students initially made a rough sketch with the pencil tool and then replayed the animation so that they could compare their graph with the actual water level. This gave them more feedback, which helped them to revise their graph to better match the situation. Now let's see. How do you do that? Um, and then... Do what? Oh, I'm close. Okay. Okay. So what you do is you take the little oh, line. Oh, yeah. Now we do have to do that. Ooh, I went way too fast. So what were some strategies that were advantageous for the students in this task? Most students just guessed the first time. They would draw a fairly reasonable graph and then replay the animation multiple times to fine-tune their graph. A few students would play and pause their animation at regular intervals, plot the water level at that point in time, and then connect the points with the line. Because of the constructive nature of the task, students were usually not satisfied with their graphs until they matched perfectly. So now he checks, and he puts line. the dot there, and then he... Well, that one didn't work. Can you delete that dot? Does this task give you any insight into how your students understood the problem? You will be surprised. What? This is pretty close. The students were directly interacting with the technology. It was interesting how they responded to the feedback vocally. Students were in intently watching their screens <laughs> and would show different emotions based on their interactions with the technology. I saw frustration, surprise, amusement, and confusion. I could hear their learning and thinking through some of their comments. Do you feel this has changed the nature of the mathematical knowledge involved? Definitely. Although the students had much experience with graphing with pencil and paper or graphing calculators, I saw that they had a weak understanding of how the shape of a distant time graph was related to speed. Many of them still think that the shape of the graph has to do with the position of an object, or in this case, shape of the beaker. One student commented to himself, oh, the level is supposed to be lower at this point in time, as he adjusted his graph. Another student said in exasperation, I need to make it even steeper for the neck of the bottle. Oh, okay. Mine is so awesome. Okay, so here your line is... Okay, so yeah. there it catches up again and there it's... Be okay, that's awesome. Slope took on a whole new meaning for the students as they visualized the speed of the changing water level. It was apparent that the students began to make a stronger connection between the changing diameter of the beaker to the rate of change of the water level. I went steep for, I mean, I went too steep right here. 
Several students made comments like, hmm, as the beaker gets narrower, the water goes up faster, or the graph gets steeper. It seems that this task really helps students have a deeper, more dynamic understanding of the mathematics involved. I tried this activity in class as well. However, I did not use Desmos. Instead, I gave students a worksheet with diagrams of the various beakers beside blank height versus time graphs. Students were asked to visualize the process of filling a beaker and sketch the graphs. Without the animation, students really had to think about the situation and how it affects the water level. Whereas on the computer, students could pause the animation at specific instances to help them graph. The paper and pencil activity provided no feedback to accurately graph. Most students were able to relate the shape of the beaker to how fast the water level would be changing, but struggled to translate this to the shape of the graph. As we can see in one of the examples of the paper and pencil activity, students were able to determine that the water would fill up slower or faster at certain parts in the beaker, depending on the shape. However, transferring that over to the graph, they weren't sure what the shape of the graph should look like at the different points. So they weren't able to transfer one point in the graph or in the beaker to the graph itself. Where, where would it go? In this example of the spherical beaker, we can see that the student has a good understanding of what is happening with the water filling up in the beaker as time passes. So the student writes, the very bottom fills up very quickly. Then as the beaker widens, its height slows down over time. And then as it thins again, the height over time increases and then it flattens out to a constant height over time, increase at the top of the beaker. So they understand what's happening with the water in the shape of the beaker, but transferring that onto the graph, we can see that this height over time is increasing and somehow the height of the water has decreased and then it continues to increase. I agree that this Desmos activity is a powerful learning tool for students. However, are there any aspects about the task or technology that you would change? Although most students gained a clear understanding of slope, I felt that some students drew their graphs without really thinking about the process. This is because they could move the scrubber in tiny intervals and plot those points and draw an accurate graph almost immediately. I would have liked to have one final beaker where they could see the shape of the beaker and had to figure out the shape of the graph without the ability to watch the animation during the process. Another extension that would show a student's full understanding would be to present the graph first and have the students design the corresponding beaker shape. In general, I feel that the Desmos waterline activity is a powerful learning tool for students to begin relating speed of motion and slope. This is especially true because of the instant feedback it provided the students with. The application is very visual and the play pause aspect gave the students time to analyze the situation more carefully. This cannot be done in a paper and pencil learning environment or with a beaker and water in real life.